Hey everyone, winners never cheat and cheaters never win. Stop back and let's talk a little bit about the incident that's rocked the angling industry here in the last month. Hey, so by now everybody's heard about the Lake Erie walleye tournament cheating situation that occurred here recently and I think it's disturbed a lot of for sure a lot of tournament anglers probably disturbed a lot of uh, in environmental conservationists uh, it's been in social media it's been everywhere it's kind of uh, been one of those things that you fear is gonna give tournament fishing a black eye I've seen a lot of social media on it. A lot of folks are talking about their reaction to it. Um, of course, my reaction was I was, you know, upset and disturbed by that level of uh, cheating and, and the complete and total lack of integrity that comes along with it. I think that's been well documented, but uh, this isn't something new. You know, this has been going on for a long time. It's something you have to deal with in competitions. I mean, we've seen it in professional sports. Uh, cheating at different levels whether it's performance enhancing drugs and in the tournament fishing world it's trying to tip the balance in one way or another and and this was an egregious one uh, but like I said it isn't new and I've had experience with it uh, I just wanted to my message other than to the youth is you've got to have some integrity and it's okay to lose you know it's okay to learn lessons through loss and your ego doesn't have to you know take control of you to the degree that you think you need to do something like that and I think a lot of that is rooted in maybe how they're how those two are brought up I don't know but uh, certainly would hope to that would never be you know your sons that you see doing something like that so it, it's a integrity is a big part of it uh, but yeah it's nothing new I was a tournament director I appreciate the tournament directors I think that's a point I wanted to get out was the tournament directors I know so many of them that um, it is the utmost importance for them to have a fair competition and you know they're sticklers for rules they're uh, you know they're doing everything in their power to try to prevent something like that from happening now, it just gives the sport a black eye it cheats everybody else uh, who's preparing uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time in, in those series to prepare and to have somebody take that away from you uh, you know through means like that is 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 just not good uh, i was uh helping with a tournament series back in oh this was 2009 the north american ice fishing circuits uh championship was on a lake in in our town here in wisconsin and uh it was a championship event it was chock full of the, some of the best ice fishermen at the time there was even a television series being filled at the time at the time called ice men uh, i've still got my cd here right and that was the technology of the day uh, to get uh, media messages out about something, you know, uh, slower times now, social media, you do something like what happened and it's, it's out there that day and spread like wildfire, that message. But in, in, in this series, I was affiliated with the production staff from Iceman and, and the, the owners of the North American Ice Fishing Circuit and highly uh, capable and, 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 and folks of high integrity, right? And 98% of the anglers in the circuit were top notch high caliber high character people and it just takes a couple or one or two low character people to to really damage you know a sport and, and put a black eye on what otherwise is you know tournament anglers are some of the best conservationists out there they spend the most some of the most time on the water they 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 care about the the environment they care about that resource you know it's uh, in, in the bass world that i'm in it's it's all catch and release. So, I mean, it's, it's of utmost importance that we're taking care of our resources. Uh, anyways, in, in my experience, I was working with the circuit, putting on this tournament. I was, I was helping out the tournament director in, a, in an administrative capacity. And, and uh, some, somebody, one of the anglers came to, to the tournament director and I during the, during the pre-fishing stage and said they found something irregular on the ice. And, I've got a link in the description below to this episode of Iceman and I'll put a link to the timestamp in the video when this, this went down if you want to check it out. It was pretty interesting, uh, pretty upsetting that somebody would try to cheat in this manner, but it happened there too. There was, you know, I think $10,000 in, 
you know, uh, national championship rings and, and a lot of uh, adulation and, and notoriety that came with being the national champion and, and you know, uh, industry backing and sponsorships at the time were, were fairly substantial. And, and so it was an important deal and it was an important, important deal for the folks in this Iceman series. The, the 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 guys on the tour and I know it still is because the North American ice fishing tour still exists and or North American ice fishing circuit still exists and championship level fishing ice fishing even still exists and uh, it happened so anyways the uh, the person turned in the information that they suspected something was irregular with a, some holes in an area off of the uh, what would they be be considered the community halls and sure enough we went over and put a camera down and found out that there was a you know, a European style fish uh, basket under the ice and it was hooked to a string and a stick and they were filling it in pre-fishing with fish and then they would, you know, their plan was to come and, uh, sh you know, shanty up or shack up over it and replace fish or whatever they were doing during the tournament. So we found it, cameraed it, covered it back up and then kind of, you know, laid in wait during the tournament for the people to come and sure enough they came and by the before we could get to them, they had holed up over it, made whatever transfer they made, and were off of it. Um, what we could see when we got there is that the fish, you know, one of the fish that they put back in was alive, while the others were dead when we found them earlier. Uh, so it was clear that the transfer had been made, although we didn't see the transfer. And so even on the show, you'll see uh, we went through a scenario where, um, you know, we we made the accusation they denied the accusation i think in a lot of tournament series now they've got lie detector tests and official challenge procedures and whatnot for for that sort of thing uh and i don't remember i if whether or not there was that sort of a, a you know provisions at that time in this circuit I, I believe there was but i don't know the details of it i don't know about the lie detector test but i do know that we didn't see them actually do it. We saw them hole up over it. We knew what it looked like before they did it. We knew what it looked like after they did it, but we didn't actually see the physical transfer. So when they denied it, you know, we were kind of back to square one. Uh, you know, the competition was still going on. It was a two day event. And it just so happened, as you'll see in the video clip, that they had broken another rule, pretty major rule from a partner standpoint in that tournament series at that time was the spacing you could be apart and when, when they were fleeing the scene, one person fled faster than the other and they, they very much broke the spacing, partner spacing rule and, and were disqualified. So the cheaters didn't win in that case, even though we didn't catch them actually red-handed doing the deed, uh, but in fact, we're able to get them out of the tournament so they don't negatively affect others. And, and that's what cheating really does. Um, I know that these two characters from Ohio, they're indicted. You know, a grand jury has indicted them, which is charging them uh, of that those crimes, I think they're a fifth degree felony offense. And I think there's a, you know, a natural resources offense in there for the fillets that they had, uh, unlawful possession of a uh, game or whatever related to those fillets. But it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. I think they can get up to a year in jail and $2,500 in fines with that fifth degree felony. But, you know, it, it, um, the jail time obviously would be damaging to them individually. The fines aren't very great. Can, considering the the time and effort and money that others spent in those tournament series pursuing that goal and to kind of be cheated out of that uh is you know is kind of crazy uh, and whether or not they've they, it sounds like they're resolving that tournament's situation in terms of first place and so on and they've confiscated their boat and uh maybe even taking steps to rectify previous tournaments i don't know but you know, you can't catch them all, like in the case of, uh, that I was involved in with the North American Ice Fishing Circuit at that time in 2009. You know, uh, we didn't catch them exactly red-handed doing it, you know, stuffing the lead in the fish, or maybe forensically they can unwind that with the charges and the, 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 the subsequent trial that they'll go through with those charges or whatever, they don't plea. But uh, in our case, we got them out, uh, so... You know, we felt good that they weren't taking money from people, but it was still a, you know, it casts a, dis, it casts a shadow on, on a otherwise awesome event. And uh, like I said before, it, it, it you know, uh, that kind of media about a sport you like getting out there like that is, you know, it's not good for the sport. So it just, just you know, casts a bad, bad shadow on it. I think most people understand that it's those people and not the sport, but that's not the kind of media you want 
uh, about your effort. And that's why I said before, in the tournament series that I'm involved with currently, and I know that, uh, you know, I listened to the, the one uh, for that Lake Erie series that that tournament director cares and and uh, the tournament directors that we have in the, in the tournament series that I fish, the tournament directors do care and they do take steps to make sure and make sure everybody understands that, that this is a high integrity thing. And, and then lastly, for the kids listening, and, and I'd love some comments on this, what we can, you know, what you can do, you know, as, as folks are growing up in this age of social media and whatnot, to, to just to make sure that that isn't even a consideration in their brain. And it probably founded deeply in integrity things and character things when they're being brought up. But, you know, nobody needs to win that bad, you know. I, uh, my son and I love to win tournaments. We love to, to place in them and do well. And, and, you know, it's part of the love of the outdoors mixed with the competition and the competitive spirit. That's all part of it. But uh, most of our learning is, 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 uh, happens when we're taking a beating not necessarily celebrating how good we did or how lucky we were. So to those uh, youngsters that might be listening, you know, that's where you learn. So don't let your ego get in the way. Don't ever put yourself in a position where you're even thinking about that sort of a thing uh, because something is, is definitely tripped up along the way. So just my thoughts on it. I know a lot of folks are, are talking about it right now. I wanted to give my two cents and say that it's been around. You know, I've been fishing for a long, long time now and here this incident was in 2009, all those years ago, uh, at a major event, things were happening as well. So uh, interested in your comments, interested in you know your thoughts about uh, things that we can do to keep shedding a good light on it and, uh, and, and maybe uh, help folks understand that our sport is good and that this was a, you know, an isolated incident. Yeah, so. That's my two cents on it. I wanted to weigh in on it. I know a lot of folks have weighed in on it. And there, maybe some are even getting tired of hearing about it. But I think that it, it riled up the tournament world and the fishing world enough that folks, you know, it's good to talk about uh, integrity and issues like that and, and kind of make sure folks understand, especially our youngsters understand that, that uh, it's okay to, to lose in a tournament and you don't always have to be the winner. And um, you know that's a those are low character issues, and they have serious consequences nowadays. You know, you think about the documentation of the uh, the what I was talking about is on a television show that's on a CD that's in a YouTube video now that doesn't have a lot of views. The consequences for that uh, uh, Ohio incident on Lake Erie are significant and instant, and so uh, you know you got to take the high road. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time on the water.